Hi everyone, Megan here from Modern Genealogy. Today's video is going to be a little bit different than usual. I am going to share with you some research that I did for one of my ancestors in a class project last year and share with you some ways that we can use census records to further our research and to find more members of our family that might have been lost. Sometimes we get so stuck on only researching those families that uh, need their temple work done or that do not look finished. We leave those ones alone, that they have children, they're married, and they look complete. But I'm going to show with you how looking through all of the census records for a family can help uncover lost children or other family members that may have been forgotten about. This is my great-great-grandmother, Ellen Griffith Perry. She was born about 1853 in Wales. Now, what was on her family search profile when I began my research was what's shown here. It had her, her three siblings, her parents, and they were said to have been married about 1852 in Langean, Carnarvon, Wales. So as I began my research, I wanted to find um, the marriage record for her parents and to find vital dates for her and her siblings. And as I researched, I uncovered a lot more. So first, to learn more about her family, I started looking at census records. That is a great place to start your research because if they lived from 1850 on, you are likely to find them in census records and that can give you a lot of information about their family. So when I started looking for her, I first wanted to find how many Ellen Griffiths or, um, were in the area. These are common names. If you know Wales, you know that Griffith and all of these names shown here are very common. And so that can get confusing. Um, so I found there was only one Ellen Griffith who was born in that time period uh, in the 1861 census that was born in Longan. And this is where I found them. So you can see in the house in Wales, they named their houses. So in that second column there, it shows the name as Faclas, F-A-C-L-A-S, or it could be F-A-E-H-A-S, <laughs> I don't know exactly, but that was the house name. And you can see her father's name of John Griffith, her mother's name of Rebecca, and her siblings Thomas, and then herself, Laura and Catherine. And they were all living in Longian. So that matched with what was, what was shown in Family Search. All their ages matched. So that shows all of their names there. And then it also shows uh, their, where they were born there. So her father was born in Laniestin. I kind of cut that ditto mark there. And she was born in Longin like her mother and her other siblings. So that D-O just means ditto. So now I wanted to find out some more about her family. So I started looking for the 1871 census just to learn more about them um, and see uh, how, if their parents were still living or whatever. So when I started looking for the 1871 census, I started looking for John Griffith, her father, born about the same time but I couldn't find him anywhere. So then I looked for her mother, Rebecca Griffiths, and this was the only Rebecca Griffith with that uh, age and birthplace. And you can see there's still a Laura and Catherine. Ellen was not living at home still. She would have been um, about 18. Uh, but you can see Laura and Catherine were the same age, well, about 10 years older. And then there's this other John Griffith. And if you see the relation to the head of the household is son. So that got me a little excited. I thought, oh boy, <laughs> there's more than just those four kids that were in this household. And you can see their birthplaces there in the right-hand column. They were all born in Langan also, and their ages matched. So then I started looking in other censuses. I began going backwards now because I wanted to learn more about my great-great-great-great-grandmother Ellen's parents. So I looked for the 1851 census now, and I was looking for 
this John Griffith and Rebecca Griffith. So according to John Griffith's age on the 1861 census, he would have been born about 1823. So I looked in a big range, 1817 to 1827, living in Longian, Carnarvonshire, because that's where they, they lived in 1861 and 1871, and where the son John, who was born about 1843, was born. So in 1851, they were likely living there also, but I could not find any results for this family. So I decided to search for Rebecca Griffith, also born about 1821, but no results. Search was also done for their son John, the eldest one that we found in the 1871 census, born about 1843, but no results in the entire county of Carnarvon. So I finally decided to search just for the first name of John with no surname because we know that indexed records often are incorrect. So I looked for a John with no surname, born about 1822 in Lanny because that's where uh, Alan Griffith's father, John, was born. And there was one match that, that resulted for a family that I believe is the correct household. Now, if you see at the bottom of this page, there is a John Daniel and a Rebecca Daniel. This John Daniel was 28 years old, which in the 1861 census, 10 years later, he was 39. So that matches pretty well. And his wife, Rebecca, was a couple years older, which also matches with the 1861 census. The only thing is their last name is Daniel. But if you see the household above them, their last name was Griffith, which you can't see very well there, but we'll zoom in a little bit. And if you see that first column there, the name of the house that they lived looks a lot like the house that they lived in 1861, the Fackless, F-A-C, or it could be F-A-E-L-A-S. I'm not totally sure on that. So that is why I believe this family was the same family, and their name, their last name for some reason was written down incorrectly. So you see the John, Daniel there, Rebecca, and five more children that I did not have on their family search profile already. So there's a Daniel who was 10, John who was 8, which matches with his age of 28 in the 1871 census, Mary who is 6, Elizabeth who is 3, and Robert who is 1. So now these are all the census records that I had found. The 1851, and all of their ages and birthplaces there, the 1861 and the 1871. So you can see how they correlate there, but how some of the children were not living at home in the 1861 census. You would think that Robert Daniel, who would have been only 11, would have been living at home in 1861. But the more research that I've done in Wales, the more I have found that it was very common for children to leave home at the age of 11, 12, 13, to go live as, as a servant or an, oppress, an apprentice for another household. It is also possible that he passed away before 1861. So now I wanted to find out more about when John and Rebecca Griffith were likely married. I wanted to go back to the 1841 census. Now this was the first year that um, censuses were available in Wales, but there's something unique in this census. Those who were over 15 years old, their ages were rounded down to the nearest uh, five. So if someone was 32 years old on the census, it would record their age as 30. So as I started looking for the 1841 census for this family, I struggled for a bit until I realized that their ages might be different. So I was looking all over for John Griffith, born about 1823, and I wasn't finding anything. And then I started looking for Rebecca, and I found her. And here is their household that I found. John Griffith, age 15, Rebecca, age 20, and a Daniel, age 3 weeks. And this was all in Langan where they had lived for all the other censuses. And these were the only Rebecca and John Griffiths 
that matched their ages in this parish. So I knew that John Griffith in 1841 was not yet 20 years old, but his wife was at least 20. So their, na their oldest child's name of Daniel matches with the 1851 census that had their last name recorded as Daniel. So this confirms to me that this was actually the right family and the family in the 1851 census was also the correct family. Now that I knew when they were probably married, they were probably married um, in 1840 or 1841, I was able to find their marriage record, which confirmed that her maiden name was Rebecca Roberts, which matched with the known information that I had already. And it also confirms their age. So if you see the age there, they often just put if they were of full age, which was age 21 or under age, and you can see that John Griffith, it says under age. So he was less than 21 years old when they were married and his wife was at least 21. And they were married in Lanigan. I was also able to find the birth record for their oldest child, Daniel. And that also confirms that his mother's maiden name was Roberts. There, you can see that. And that matches with his age. The censuses in Wales were normally done in June, and so he would have been about three weeks old. So now that I looked at all of those census records for this family, I was able to find five more siblings for my great-great-grandmother, Ellen. Now there's a lot more research that needs to be done for this family and sometimes it can be difficult in Wales, especially when children leave the house so young. But this gives me a good start and a good framework to go off of to learn more about my great-great-grandmother's family. I know that looking through all of those census records can sometimes be confusing, but you can see that as I took it slow and as I looked for each specific census record, instead of just doing a general search over the whole um, website of Ancestry or Family Search, I searched for the specific thing I was looking for in the specific place that I thought it would be. And I was able to find my ancestors in a place that I probably wouldn't have if I, if I searched it any other way. I have an upcoming online course that I have developed for you. It is for people like me who have their tree and family search already. They have a desire to learn more about their family. They want to put the pieces together and find out about their family and do temple work for them, but they're stuck. Maybe they are overwhelmed. They don't know where to start. They think they're doing everything wrong, but this course is for you. Throughout this course, we will learn how to search effectively, how to uncover information about your family, and how to know that it's correct for your family, and then how to input that into family search. It is a process that I have learned throughout my studies at BYU-Idaho, and as I learned, I just knew that I needed to get this out to more people. Um, you shouldn't have to become a professional genealogist to be able to find your family, and I know that through this course, I can help you. So please go to moderngenealogy.ca slash waitlist to get on the waitlist my, for my course. I'm hoping to open up the cart on Monday, June 1st, as long as I can get all of my pieces all tied together on my end. But please go to moderngenealogy.ca slash waitlist to sign up for the waitlist. If you do, you will get 50% off the course and you will be the first to get access to to that. As I have done more research and talked to other people who are trying to do research for their own families and maybe getting frustrated, I've learned that a major part of family history work is getting to know our ancestors. Sometimes it is very hard to find new names in our family tree who need temple work done, and that is totally fine. I think a lot of the focus needs to be on learning about our families. I know that as we learn about them, as we learn their stories, and imagine what life would have been like for them, we can feel their presence more near. They are still there. <laughs> they are part of us, and they are there to help us in our lives today. 
And I hope that you will be a part of my upcoming course where you can learn how to connect with your ancestors and share that love of your ancestors with your family. Thanks so much for watching this video today. Please share it with your family and especially those who may think that their family tree is all done. I thought that a lot of my tree was already all done. But as I've learned more and more about family history, I know that it is never done. There is always more we can learn, more we can uncover, more we can verify, and more we can connect to our ancestors. 